Hi, it's Sarah with House Copper, and it is super cold out today. And so if the shop vac, the shop heater turns on, it's because it's like freezing. Like the kids didn't even have school yesterday. It was so cold here. But anyway, I'm doing a video on um, <laughs> cookware that's not repairable. And I have done videos about tin lined and stainless steel line copper pots many times and there are no right or wrong in terms of cookware um you use what you want to use you enjoy what you're going to enjoy and and go for it right but there are some mechanical realities that come with stainless lined copper cookware that make them in my opinion less desirable and i'm going to show you one such reason this is revereware this was made in the 1970s this piece is lined with stainless. You can actually see the stainless in insert here. Um, if you go up really close, you can see that there's uh, probably, it's probably three fourths thickness stainless. And then there is a copper piece that is also been stamped or spun that is like sitting and put over this stainless insert. However, because you, you aren't able to tin the inside and seal rivets. They are not riveting the inside, which means that these rivets, which are like a, the same, let's see if I can get you to see it, the same, uh, like, I guess you want to call it bronze, brass, as this these handles, they are used to attach the rivets to just the thin copper exterior layer. Now, as I've mentioned as well, that stainless and copper, no matter if they're touching each other like this, they will not give each other their qualities. So stainless will always be 25 times slower at conducting heat and copper will always be 25 times faster at conducting heat, period. They don't magically give each other these properties just because they're sitting next to each other. Science. You can argue with me on that all you want, but you're going to have to take it up with the people who did the periodic table of elements and came up with like all of the numbers of conductivity. I didn't make that up. That is just fact. But here is what happens with the differing temperatures. This handle, and you can see it, is no longer attached. There's no way to fix this. I can't drill this rivet out and replace it with a new one and tin it like I would if it was lined with tin. I cannot solder this on because one, I'm only soldering to a like a very thin piece of copper. And I cannot get underneath this handle to clean it to take solder. So like the best thing I could do would be to like, like clean all the way around the handle, like where it's kind of dirty, clean around it, and then like put silver solder, like a glue on the exterior of it. Cause I cannot clean underneath there at all. And as you can see, like there's literally no like attachment. Like I honestly can't tell how this used to be attached. It almost, it looks like there was some sort of epoxy, like high heat epoxy used to attach these in the seventies, which is also the only other option I would have, which would be to use an epoxy, which is literally like, you know, a silicone glue and it's not going to hold up great. Um, and it's going to look a little junky. There's just no way around it. Bottom line, I'm going to have to go back to this customer now and say, I don't have a way to fix this. I can't do anything with this rivet. It's just gone. It's whether or not it was even a usable rivet in the past, it's not um it's not fixable. And so that's why when I say use your stainless line copper, go for it, but then understand that when it's broken, it is most times irreparable or if you are going to repair it, you're going to be doing a hack repair with epoxy glue or crappy solder that may not even hold up. So um, this is a prime example of this. And this is why, I mean, this pot is only a few decades old and I'm repairing pots that are 300 years old because they're lined with tin, just longevity. So um, that's just another example of where the differing heats of the interior and exterior, and then using, you know, like not even real rivets to attach handles can kind of come back to bite you. So 
Um, I love these discussions. It always opens up a big, long wormhole of preferences and, you know, uh, people's experiences, which is fine. But I am just showing another example because I've showed bubbles in the past of where like they separate and I can't repair the copper on one side because the stainless is in the way. This is another example of where stainless um, interiors can actually hurt you in, in the future um, in terms of repairs if something goes wrong. So anyway, that is it. Yay, House Copper. Thank you for joining me again on this little quick video tutorial of um, the differences between stainless and tin line copper cookware. Please don't forget to subscribe and check out my other videos. And um, if you want to sign up for a workshop, there are still some spots left for each of them for 2025. Um, and if it's not 2025 when you're watching this, there's probably this year's workshops that are hopefully not full yet. Um, find me on Facebook, find me on Instagram, pick up a copy of Copper, Iron, and Clay wherever books are sold, and I will see you next time.